Thank you, Esteban. Um, as you said, um, my name is Annabelle Enriquez, and I'm uh, with the Getty Conservation Institute. What? Oh, sorry. Um, my name is Annabelle Enriquez, and I'm with the Getty Conservation Institute, and I'm here to present on the project that I work on with um, um, others in my team, um, the Arches Cultural Heritage Data Management Platform. And I presented this uh, two years ago in Oslo, but there have been some significant changes since then. Um, this is what I'm going to cover. It's a lot, but I'm a fast talker, and I'm, I'm going to try to slow myself down, though, um, but, and so we can have some questions, some time for questions and answers. Okay, so what is Arches? Arches, it's, you know, you can see it up there, it's a modern open source um, geospatial platform for cultural heritage data management. So basically for cultural heritage organizations to manage their own data. And the project started initially as um, a project for software for cultural heritage inventories. And it started in 2012. Um, when the Getty Conservation Institute um, partnered up with the World Monuments Fund and to, 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 um, to develop the software for heritage inventories. And as we were developing, we decided that uh, we, we came up with the following key requirements. I'm not going to go through these, but basically my point is here is that these requirements led to the development of Arches as it is now, so that it's actually more flexible and not just for built cult or immovable cultural heritage. And so the shift between Arches, the heritage inventory and management system, and to the cultural heritage data management platform um, occurred uh, last year, August 2017, when we launched version four of Arches. Um, so I'm actually going to just jump into what Arches is with the features. And to do that, what I'm going to do is I'm going to make a distinction between data discovery and then data management. Um, there is some overlap here, as you can see through this Venn diagram, um, but it's, I will cover it all. <laughs> so with data discovery, the two types or uh, categories that I'm going to be talking about are um, discovery through geospatial visualization, so I'll talk about some geospatial features that Arches has, and then um, just the general search, so interrogating the database. So with the geospatial features, um, it is a geospatial platform that sees location as one of many important things to describe cultural heritage. And in version 4, we built an integrated map and tile server so that you could serve up your own historic maps or um, satellite imagery or whatever tiles you want, in addition to ex uh, linking to existing map services. So that's available to you. So this is really slow. I just want to let you know it's not always like this. But um, I did this under a really slow um, internet connection. And I noticed that it was showing all the tiles. So I just kept it. Um, but it normally, you don't normally see that. And this is, um, his, this is the city of Lincoln's um, implementation, which is going to launch in May um, of this year. And that's a historic map for that. Okay. Also, too, you're able to digitize within the platform. Um, geometries as part of data entry, or you can pull in geometries from other existing services. Right now we have a link where you can go to QGIS and actually cut and paste a geometry from um, QGIS into the Arches data entry platform. And here you can see that we're digitizing here, and there's already a point. You can have point, line, polygon, any combination, any number, however many geometries you need to describe your heritage, or none at all. It's, it doesn't assume that you need a location to have a record. So here's a summary of some of the things I talked about um, with the geospatial features, but uh, with the exception of spatial search, because I'm going to weave that into just the general search with here. So um, just describing what's going on here, uh, I want to basically have a research question. I want to know how many chamber tombs there are in um, Valley of the Queens in Egypt. So I've been drawing a polygon to um, designate the Valley of the Queens. And then I'm going to appear on type chamber, and then you can see suggested terms. So what I have is chamber tombs, which is part of a vocabulary for a heritage resource type. And then it shows me um, I have 23 results for all of the chamber tombs within this geographic boundary. And then I've, I'm actually adding another one another variable, which is um, cultural period, 19th dynasty, and I, that furthers it down to 15. And so these are my results. 
And maybe I want to know what's not a chamber tomb with those parameters. I can just click on chamber tomb, which negates it, so which ones are not, and I've got three. And those are, um, in this case, they're shaft tombs. So those are some of the search features, uh, that search, this is uh, um, building a search. And then uh, what I have is here is discovery via relationships. So this is um, a related resources um, diagram with, within the platform. And so this is a house de um, designed by Frank Lloyd Wright. Frank Lloyd Wright, this was his son. This was Arm Schindler. No, yeah, Arm Schindler and then his grandson, who are both his son and his grandson, both architects. And you can see all of the relationships here between the data. You can also search temporally. Um, you can do that in a, um, you saw me do it through cultural period, which is um, in the database, but also that you can do it through time. And this is just a histogram of the different um, time values that are uh, available in there. And so we, we um, narrowed that down and then we can bring it back out if we want to um, expand the time. So here's a, um, here are the, fe the search features. Uh, what I didn't show are the advanced search, which is what you would typically think of as an advanced search where you're able to interrogate each of the, um, the data fields. And then um, save searches, which is basically curated searches that, um, that people can just click on. All right, so then now moving on to data management. Uh, the two most significant things here are the Arches Designer and the Reference Data Manager. So the Arches Designer, it's probably the most significant thing that had um, to happen to Arches in version four. So it allows you to define the resource model um, it, within your Arches interface, um, the data entry forms and reports, and they all um, build upon your initial data model. And you, for each data node in your data model, you're able to specify the ontology class, whether that be CRM or a combination of CRM and something else, and others, and then also the data types. And then that funnels down to um, the data entry, where you're able to customize the data entry forms as, you, as much as you want, or as little as you want. Okay, and then just to go over that again, I could talk for a whole day about the Arches Designer, but I won't. Um, I'll just go through a couple of things here. So basically, you create your data model, and then that generates the data entry forms, and then uh, also generating the reports. And then in the data, on the data modeling side, um, you're able to um, define your data model, as I said before, um, with, um, and for each node, define the, onto uh, the ontological class and the property that connects it to um, another um, node. So here's an example. Again, here we've got a chamber, to a chamber tomb in um, Valve de Queens. This is Queen Nefertari's tomb. A heritage resource. P1, it's identified by a name, E41 Appalachian. Um, and in Arches, it would, that would be QV66, which is um, the primary name. So, um, and then in Arches, you can have as many as you want. You can have alternate names and as many names as you like and names in different languages if you want. And then also, too, I will mention that for each node, you can select whatever data type you want. Um, Arches is very modular, and so um, you know it's basically like you can think of it as kind of building blocks to defining your database. So um, here you can see that we've got kind of you know the usual suspects when it comes to data types, but we're also working on um, incorporating fuzzy dates into the platform using um, extended date time format, as well as uh, geospatial data, which you've just seen. Um, charts for scientific instrumentation data, and um, links to image servers and others. But also, too, you can have cons conceptual data that links to controlled vocabularies, which are managed in the Arches Reference Data Manager, which manages vocabularies um, in your Arches instance. So you can have multiple labels here. This is where you can manage it, have, have scope note and then um, hierarchy and relationships um, of your concept to other concepts. Okay. So I kind of breeze through that part. Um, and then 
the, the, the middle section that kind of connects them are the permissions and users. So um, one of the th really important things, especially when you're dealing with cultural heritage data, is access to data, being able to define that. Um, so the Arches Permissions Manager allows you to do that, where you're able to um, create users and groups, and for each of those users and groups, give, a, um, give them permissions for each particular node. So for no each node, you can say this user has this access, they can read, write, or delete. Okay. And then so um, com moving forward, what we have now, it, uh, we're developing an active development for a mobile data collection app that will be online and offline. And um, for that, you'll be able to define a mobile data collection project where you can um, define the spatial extent, the users and groups who are going to be able to collect data, and what exact um, what exact pieces of data there are it, that they will be allowed to collect. Um, we'll also have a workflow module which um, will allow you to create a specific data entry workflow across different data models in your Arches instance. So for example, if you have some sort of caseworker consultation um, workflow, you can, you can create that within, uh, with the new workflow module. And then we'll have a, a more fully documented API that will actually help to drive both of those um, developments. Um, in terms, and just some notes about implementation. Um, this is, these are just some common misconceptions. Uh, Arches is not, not collecting data. This, um, this is uh, software for uh, organizations to take and do whatever they want with. It's an open source project and you can take the code as the only stipulation that we have is that um, you don't sell it, you don't sell any enhancements and that you make that available to others um, if you, you know, add something new. Um, and these are just some options for server implementation. You can have it as open or closed as you want. Um, organization one is hosting it on the cloud and making it available in different ways to different users. And organization two is having it completely closed on a, um, a, a server that's in their basement and they don't want anyone to know about it. But obviously we're more proponents, proponents of this model versus this model. But um, you know, cultural data, cultural heritage data is kind of tricky. And then it is an enterprise system, so with any enterprise system, there's a lot, you know, there should be some care and thought and effort and resources that you put into it. And so this is just an example of something that we put together that just kind of shows some of the steps in, um, that you might need to undergo to really fully implement an Arches system. Okay, and I don't need to tell this, I don't really need to say this to this group, but open source is not open data, but there are some groups that I have to say that to. But I'll make the reverse comment. You can use Arches to publish linked open data, and that is um, something that is underway by certain groups. Speaking of that, those groups, here's the Arches community, um, which at the moment we've got more than 40 um, organizations that are uh, either implementing or eva actively evaluating the platform. Um, last year, Imina gave a presentation, the Endangered Archaeology for the Middle East and North Africa. They gave a presentation on how they're using Arches version 3 to document um, endangered sites throughout the area. Um, I mentioned the city of Lincoln. Historic England is implementing the platform for, for the Greater London Historic Environment Record. And last year, I was approached by the Florida Public Archaeology Network in the United States. They are interested in um, documenting their coastal archaeology. And right now, they're, they've soft launched a version of their of Arches, uh, Arches version 4, and with a crowdsourcing effort. And they currently have cemeteries and historic structures throughout Florida, as well as, and, and they will have archaeological. Um, so, also the city of San Francisco, I'm working with them to uh, help them implement arches for their for citywide survey and then, um, inventory system, and then these are some other ones that are currently underway. So, Philippine Heritage Map, Cane River, Art Forces Retirement Center, our home, Historic Places LA, Kingdom of Nepal, and Kingdom of Bhutan. And then non-inventory implementations. 
include um, Arches for Conservation Science data, which is the, um, the art, um, DISCO project at the Getty Conservation Institute, the Arches bibliographic, um, for di bibliographic data, which is um, at, also at the GCI um, AATA Online, which is conservation uh, literature, and then Arches for provenance data, so provenance data for museums, so that is being carried out by the Getty Research Institute, and they're actually using Arches for the uh, backend data management um, in their effort to publish their provenance data as linked open data. If you want information, uh, more information about the platform, um, it's archesproject.org. And um, we are an open source project, and there's a, underneath uh, archesproject.org, you see there it is, um, our GitHub site, which you can check out what we're doing if you're interested or not. And uh, that's all I have. <laughs>